All right, and so it's time for the second installment of Full Metal Movies. I'm your host, Adam, and as you can see, I'm solo. That's mostly because this is going to be a short one, and I hadn't actually considered doing a review of this movie, uh, the movie being Central Intelligence, which is another Kevin Hart production, uh, along this time along with The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. Uh, it's a comedy. Comedies are often difficult to review. Uh, ultimately, most of them just come down to, is it funny or is it not funny? Um, but, hell, I, I had a lot to, to think about with this movie. So I figured I'd give it a try. Uh, so first off, uh, before I get into any spoilers, I'll go ahead and say uh, I enjoyed this movie. It was... Um, the easiest way to describe it is uh, amusing but disappointing. It uh, It's the kind of movie that... Uh, I hate to put this in a insulting manner. It's for people with very simple tastes of uh, humor. Uh, a sense of humor, excuse me, not taste of humor. That's bizarre. Uh, people with a very simple sense of humor. If you like, um, like there was an, uh, no, I don't want to insult people this way. There was an ad for a Medea movie called Boo! Exclamation point, a Medea Halloween. Uh, and I got the impression that, like, oh, this is who we're marketing this towards. People who might see a Medea movie. I don't know. Uh, it is an amusing movie, and there are a couple times where I did laugh out loud. For the most part, though, it never, it just doesn't try. Um, and I'll get into that to, uh, in a minute uh, when I actually get into the spoilers. But uh, is it worth seeing if you're a big fan of Kevin Hart or a big fan of The Rock? Yeah, probably. Uh, if you're not, if you're just, if you just saw the trailer and thought, man, the trailer looks really funny, which is, you know, I mean, I'm a big fan of The Rock, but I thought the trailer looked hilarious. And. Uh, Mm, didn't make it, didn't make it. But, uh, so this is where the spoilers start up. If you haven't seen the movie, or if you're interested in seeing the movie, uh, or, or, or excuse me, if you don't care about spoilers, then go ahead and listen. <laughs> Look, I'm new at this. I'm an awkward human being. Which is appropriate. Um, so I guess the, the thing about this movie that most exemplifies what it is is that uh, the Rock's character is named a this very Germanic name, Robbie Weirdict, simply so they can go for a joke that barely goes anywhere. It's it's only in the, the beginning of the movie where his bullies refer to him as Weird Dick. There's, there's no other reason. The Rock, uh, a mixed race person, typically looks Samoan, uh, particularly well, partially because he is, and partially because of the tattoos. So the whole weird dick thing just it's it's bizarre. It it's unnecessary. It's not funny. Um they could have come up with any number of other lame ass jokes to to apply to his character but um but yeah, so this movie I got the impression they wanted to go for something and then kind of said, "Eh. Like do we really how much do we care?" Um so you know, the the juxtaposition for this movie is that, for once, Kevin Hart is playing the straight man in the comedic routine. You know, like, for instance, his uh, ride-along movies, obviously, the straight man in that is Ice Cube, and he's the kind of wacky, crazy character. In this one, you're supposed to get the impression that The Rock is the wacky, crazy character, which is supposed to be uh, play against type for both of them. Uh, the Rock is typically the hardcore. He would be if if he if they recast Ride Along, uh, and Ice Cube was out. The Rock might be, probably not, but because uh, Ice Cube and The Rock are anything alike. But uh, but they both play hard asses in in action movies. Um, and uh, but the problem is is that they don't really they don't really stick with it. Like for the most part, Kevin Hart does play the straight man. But then there are moments where he goes into his Kevin Hart, like, I'm a wacky uh, short guy, like, with a with a tiny fuse, and, like, the, his, his shtick, and he's very good at it, and he's funny. Um, but it's kind of like, uh, I've been on, I've, I've done stand-up once or twice, and he, uh, when you first start doing it, like, sometimes you, you walk on stage, and you're like, I'm going to do this, and then you panic, and you start doing 
you know, dick jokes. Like, I got the impression that, like, they were like, oh, you know, Kevin's going to be the straight... Eh. What if people don't like that? What if people just want Kevin to do what Kevin does? Uh, and the same thing with The Rock. Uh, towards the end of the movie, he's just a typical character that he played, well, to some degree or another. Uh, he could have been playing uh, Hobbs from Fast and the Furious at the end of the movie. You know, there's scenes where he's just this hardcore uh, spy military guy. And it's fun. It's, that's, uh, I love The Rock. The Rock's a great action star. He's probably the only real action star. Well, we got the Stath. We got Jason Statham as well. But it's not many. And um, But if you're going to go for it, go for it. And for the most part, with The Rock's character, they do kind of go for it. They just don't arrive at anything good. Like, um, and I don't envy them because there's, um, there's a fine line between charming weirdo character and just disturbing. And they didn't really walk that line very well. Uh, when Robbie Weirdick comes back as Bob Stone in the movie, and if you haven't seen the movie, essentially you got most of the movie from the trailer, which is that uh, fat kid in high school gets thrown out in public and publicly embarrassed. Uh, super cool high school kid played by Kevin Hart, uh, character named Calvin Joyner. Calvin Joyner, also known as the Golden Jet for some reason. They never really explain where that comes from. I mean, I guess the, there's this weird flip thing that he does. But uh, but he's got a lot of nicknames in this movie. The Rock calls him all kinds of things. Um, but anyway, he he's he's the only person, uh, Calvin Joyner is the only person that's nice to him. And then Robbie Weirdick becomes a super spy who later comes across, like well, not comes across, finds Calvin Joyner, his, the only person that he considers a friend, uh, and uh, takes him into this spy world. Uh, but the other half of the movie that they don't you don't see in the trailer is that the entire time they're trying to make it seem like The Rock might be a rogue agent. He might be this uh, villainous character called the Black Badger, which I, I guess it's supposed to be kind of pulp, you know, like a pulp story, you know, much much like uh, uh, the kind of thing that Shane Black does successfully go for. But it just it comes off kind of silly. And then later there's a honey badger joke that in my head I thought, is that why they called him the black badger? So that the other guy could go, well, I'm the honey badger. And the honey badger don't give a fuck. A joke from, what, four years ago? Eh, that's probably not that long. Anyway, uh, so uh, they kind of go all over the place. Um, uh, early on when Robbie Weirdick becomes Bob Stone... They go really heavy with sort of stereotypical gay jokes, uh, implying that he's gay. But then very quickly, a waitress comes up to him and he makes a comment about, I'm done with the constant, like, meaningless sex. Basically telling you, like, he's been getting laid all over the place with hot women. And that they do throw themselves at him. Which is fine, but what was up with the, like, again, super, like, stereotypical, like, he wears a unicorn shirt and he's... Taught, tells you that like the unicorn is the most dangerous animal, and and I guess you could say he was playing a character uh, to because in the beginning he's not letting know he's not letting Calvin know that he's a, a spy, but it really doesn't um, it just doesn't play, and you know I feel like if anyone actually watched this or, or really read through this the script and took notes, you'd probably say no, why are we doing this? For a lot of it. Um, uh, but The Rock really goes over the top with the creepiness to the point where uh, throughout the whole movie, Calvin's risking his, his life and his marriage, uh, both of whom are, are of utmost importance. His wife is like played as this amazing woman. She's, she's pretty much perfect. She loves him despite the fact that he is kind of a, a failure. Uh, she She's gorgeous, she's successful, she's smart, uh, there's really, there's, there isn't a moment where you go, ah, this, this chick, you know, she's, something's up, you know, uh, she's, she's played as perfect. So why is he risking his marriage for this, this guy that he hasn't seen in 20 years, um, 
Why is he re- literally risking his life over and over again, even though he's given multiple chances to get out? Well, sort of. Um, and you never really buy, wait, 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 what does he see in this this guy who behaves like a lunatic the whole time? There's there's never a moment where it's it's not questionable that The Rock's character, Bob Stone, Robbie Weirdick, is a lunatic. And, uh, it just, it, it's kind of baffling. Um, so, uh, let's see what else. Um, uh, they play with a lot of tropes in this movie. Uh, obviously the first one is that, uh, well, it turns out the rock might be the black badger. He might be the villain behind all this. Um, but you never buy into it at all. It's, there's, there's never a moment where you're like, no, The Rock, wow, The Rock might be the villain. Um, and the sad thing is that even though I realize this is supposed to be a somewhat broad action comedy, I really kind of wish The Rock had ended up the villain. Like, if at the end of the movie, it turns out that Calvin threw away his entire life because he believed in this guy who was a lunatic... That would have been amazing. This movie would have been, it would have been fucked up, but it would have been redeemable. You know, you could, you would have walked away like this is a, this is a memorable movie. Like, yeah, it was a weird movie, but man, that ending. And granted, uh, The Rock actually did a similar thing in the Get Smart movie, which is way better if you, if you're ever interested with uh, Steve Carell, The Rock, and uh, oh, Anne Hathaway. Uh, that, that was a funny movie, and a much better action comedy spy movie on every level. Um, but yeah, they don't go for it. Um, there's also implications that maybe the, uh, the CIA agent Pam that's been chasing them the whole time, maybe she's the black badger, but at the same time, you don't believe that either because very early on, they tell you that the rock killed his, his, uh, his partner, but you don't see the body. And if well, I don't want to be insulting to people. It's completely obvious that the the um, the partner is the the villain. He is the black badger. Um, to the very end of the movie, it's 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 they they, they try to play it like maybe he's not, but part of that is because uh, the the partner who is only given two scenes throughout most of the movie is played by Aaron Paul, a fairly famous actress. Uh, excuse me, actor. Oh, I don't know. Actually, in this day and age, I suppose he could be an actress too. But uh, Aaron Paul's pretty famous. Breaking Bad is uh, considered like one of the greatest TV shows of all time. So you're not going to hire that dude to do uh, to do like two short flashbacks where he has three words. Although they do have that Melissa McCarthy cameo at the end, but uh, but you never buy into it. And, uh, and that's the sad thing. Like they, they, again, it seems like they kind of had an idea, like, let's do something different this time. And then they sort of went, eh, you know, it's, it's, it's just very disappointing in that regard. Um, one of the oddest things to me, um, is the, uh, anti-bullying message. So obviously the, the rock is bullied as a, as a young man. Pretty horribly, the entire school laughs at his uh, grotesque, naked, gigantic body. And I am a fat man. I have a grotesque, naked, giant body. And I have had horrible uh, nightmares about people doing that to me in public. Uh, I don't know where I was going with that. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but um, but he's bullied. And so there's a couple of moments uh, in the movie, which are actually played pretty cool, where he says he doesn't like bullies. Uh, one is the first time that he kicks anyone's ass in the movie, and he just has this line of like, I don't like bullies, and then he beats up five guys, and it's awesome, and Kevin Hart's super excited, like, dude, that was awesome, you beat up those bullies, but they don't really play it um, too over the top there, but then at the end of the movie, there's this speech that The Rock gives where he talks about how uh, bullying is wrong, and we have to stop the bullies, and it just becomes suddenly very preachy, while at the same time, he strips naked to show that he's not afraid anymore. And that's justified because there's one line in, early on in the movie where he says, you know, no one's ever seen me naked since that day because I've been too embarrassed. 
And uh, uh, so Kevin Hart justifies that by saying, what about when you have sex? Uh, uh, the lights are completely off. That's not how human vision works. Um, you'd have to be like locked in a vault in order for it to be pitch black. You, you, you know, some, someone's seen you naked, dude. Um, it, it, that's, that's how that works. Uh, but, uh, but it just gets really weirdly preachy. And then they bring in Melissa McCarthy to be like, oh, here's, I get the impression. Maybe that's not what they were going for, but I get the impression they were trying to say, ah, oh, here's an actress that's often, uh, people point out her, her, uh, that she's hefty. Uh, even though she's a beautiful woman, and she is. I, I, I actually am a big fan of Melissa McCarthy. Uh, I think she's very funny when she's not being turned into literally the female, uh, what's his name, Chris Farley. But um, I, I didn't need that. I didn't need the like the over-the-top. Uh, although, I'll give them this. For once, they didn't just go with, with the... Uh, obvious thing because they mentioned her character a couple of times who was that really messed up chick with the lazy eye uh, her name was darla something or other um she also had like a weird name for no particular reason other than wouldn't it be funny if she had a weird name but uh i fully expected them to go the lazy route which is what they do with the rest of the movie and have her turn out to like oh she grew up to be gorgeous too you know she turned everything around I don't know. A horse kicked her in the head, and her lazy eye became unlazy. I don't. I don't know. I don't actually don't. I don't know how lazy eyes work, but um, uh, but they didn't. They actually uh, went for it for once. So just a really lazy movie. Uh, I'm a huge fan of The Rock. I, I I'm very disappointed that this is you know this is what they went with. Uh, the movie could have been way better. Uh. But I guess, I guess success breeds uh, some level of laziness there. I mean, uh, Adam Sandler had some pretty great movies when he first started, and he still occasionally, in my opinion, has a couple of movies that do make me laugh. Uh, not often, but occasionally. Um, but it just feels like he's just kind of phoning it in now. And um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I like Kevin Hart. I'm not the biggest fan of him, so maybe, maybe he's been. Maybe this is his typical movie. Maybe they're all kind of like this, or maybe he's getting lazy too. Well, not lazy. That guy did, like tours all the time and uh, posts all these videos of him working out. So he's not lazy, but uh, complacent maybe. So anyway, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if uh, anybody else. Uh, dislike this movie or thought it was amazing i do think it'll get some pretty positive reviews and and maybe it deserves them uh it's it's certainly not uh anything mind-blowing as far as the comedy but i can see a lot of people really enjoying this uh hopefully those people don't then don't then go on to see the medea boo movie it's actually called boo exclamation point the fuck is that why is why is tyler perry still a thing i don't understand all right that's it so this has been full metal movies uh obviously my name is adam and you can find me on a far more entertaining show called the metal hand of god podcast uh m-h-o-g podcast you can find it everywhere if you google it you do have to put podcast at the end because if you put in m-h-o-g it comes up with some sort of michigan sewage and water treatment plant uh, I feel like we're more famous than them, so fuck you, Google. Uh, but uh, you can find me at Uncle underscore Reb, R-E-B, Uncle Reb, on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I think that's about it. I don't Snapchat. Uh, nobody wants to see me naked. Is that still what they use Snapchat for? I don't think so. I don't know. Celebrities use Snapchat now. Can I see, can I see Brad Pitt's junk? I'm not saying I want to, but you know, if it was there, you know, I don't, I don't see Anna Kendrick snapping her cooter, which sounds like something different, but I would like to see that snapping your cooter. Sorry. Okay. I'm out.